Hello friends, in this video, I will explain you how you should go about reading the results that you get for your PI behavioral assessment. Now, I won't talk in this video what PI behavioral assessment is. For that, I will create a separate video and would leave the link for that video here. So what I will cover in this video is what are the factors that you are measured on. Second, how are those factors plotted in a graph and I will help you understand and read the graph. And thirdly, how do you get assigned a particular profile to yourself based on the results of the PI behavioral assessment? So essentially, PI assessment measures you on the following four behaviors. And additionally, recently there has been a fifth one which has been added. Now, previously I made a video on how you should go about acing the PI assessment in case you are appearing for a PI assessment for your dream job. Do check that video out in order to know how you should go about acing that PI assessment test and get that dream job. These are represented by factors A, B, C, D, E, and I will take you through each of these factors as to what they mean and what they stand for. Factor A is about dominance, the drive to exert one's influence on people and on situation. A person with a high A factor values independence and control over all. They are naturally innovative, venturesome, and have the tendency to challenge the status quo, while a person with low A readily accepts the authority of others, including situations when the directives are set by company policies, procedures, and systems. Now, factor B is extroversion, the drive for social interaction with others. An individual with high B has sincere interest in other people, and interacting with other people energizes them, while a person with a low B is not often driven by the need for social interaction. They may appear quiet, non-communicative, and serious at times, often seen as analytical and matter-of-fact in their interactions with others. Now, factor C is patience. That is the intensity of a person's tension and pace. A person with a high C is calm, steady, and stable. They are often content to produce and perform routine tasks over a long period of time. They are most comfortable with familiarity and accepting things the way they are. However, a person with a low C has often a bias for action and change. Now, factor D is formality, the drive to conform to structure and rules. So someone with a high D takes a serious and diligent approach to their work. They are careful about getting things right and are motivated by performing error-free work and hence simply cautious and hesitant to take any risk. Whereas someone with low D is often informal, casual, and spontaneous. They are often concerned with the end result and the end game versus how the results are being achieved. Now, there's one more factor, which is although not the core factor, however, it is also measured by the PI behavioral assessment, which is factor E. Factor E is judgment, which is how you go about making your decisions. Now, someone with a high E tends to be more objective. They'll want to examine facts, check sources, and look and analyze data before they go about making a decision. If E is low, then they are very subjective. Their gut feeling is far more important and they are less likely to seek out all the information and all sides of the story before they make the decision. They'll rely more on what feels right, even if they cannot back it with numbers. Now, quick call out here, in case you found value in this video, I have two tasks for you. One, press the like button, and second, subscribe to the channel. When you press the like button, it motivates me and tells me what is the kind of content that you like. When you press the like button, you get notified as soon as I post content on this channel. Now, upon completion of the assessment, your results for each drive will be translated into a unique behavioral pattern, which centers around a midpoint with three sigmas on each of its sides. Now, let me take you through a sample report card to tell you how it looks and how to read it. Upon completion of the assessment, your results for each drive will be translated into a unique behavioral pattern that centers around a midpoint with three sigmas on each side. So sigma 1, 2, and 3. If your results fall on the left side of the midpoint, you have a low amount of that particular drive. And if your results fall on the right side of the midpoint, you'd have high amount of that drive. The further you are from the midpoint, the stronger those behaviors will be present in the workplace. Now, the midpoint here is the average, which is the average of all the individuals who have in past filled in the survey for PI behavioral assessment. So for an average population or average individual, all their A, B, C, D would exactly fall in the middle. However, we as individuals, some fall to on the right and some fall on the left. So this 
graph kind of measures how off or how different are you from the average individual or average person. Now, secondly, based on this plotting of the graph, you will be assigned a profile. Here, the profile that I was assigned is Venturer. A Venturer is a self-starting, self-motivating and goal-oriented risk taker. So there are around 17 profiles. So based on how your results end up or how your plotting of this graph ends up, you are assigned a particular profile. I will leave the link to the list of those 17 profiles in the description box. But let me quickly run you through on the screen on how those profiles look like. So here are the 17 profiles, adapter, controller, operator, so on and so forth. If you go through this PDF, you will find that for each of the profile, the PDF gives you a summary of what are the needs of this particular individual, so understanding of the big picture, room for introspection. So now let me quickly jump onto the Venturer. So for each of the profiles, you have a big theme, which is a Venturer is a self-starting, self-motivating and goal-oriented risk taker, fine. Signature work style, so what is the communication style, delegation style, decision-making style, and so on and so forth. What are the behaviors? They are assertive, analytical, driving, non-conforming. What are their needs? This part is very important, that is what are their strengths? They drive, because this is what the organization is looking for. They drive change and challenges status quo, able to think big picture and anticipate problems, purposeful approach to most situation and people. This is the most important piece because these are the strengths that the organization would be looking in you if they're looking for a venturer. And here you see the pattern for the venturer, which is kind of the similar part pattern you saw on my results. Also, the PDF has the management strategies there as well, where it reads how to work well with them. So now going back to the results. So for factor A, either you are independent or you're collaborative. So I come towards the extreme end of independence. So factor A, if you recall, is dominance. So my dominance is very independent, which is I have high drive for uh, exerting influence on people and events. Number B or point B is extroversion. So how sociable I am. So I'm less sociable than the average person, but I'm not too far from the average, which is kind of good. So I'm independent from dominance point of view, but from being social point of view, I am an average. C represents patience. So my patience is less, which is I'm less calm, less steady and less uh, okay with status quo. And I'm less content with performing routine tasks over a long period of time. So a person with a low C has a bias for action and change. And then comes D, which is the formality, the drive to conform to formal rules and structures. Again, I'm not too far from the mean, but I'm still low. A low D here means someone who's informal, casual, and spontaneous, which kind of represents me and I would subscribe to it. Now also note that there are two kinds of plottings on the result. One is for self and one is self-concept. Self is how you are at work. So this is how I am at work. I'm very much independent at work and I am less sociable at work and I am less conforming to routine tasks. However, at a setting which is relaxed, call it at home with friends and family, I am slightly less independent than I am at work and I'm more sociable, which is a good thing. And I'm more formal here. I, I'm okay with rules and structures at home, at, with family and with friends as compared to how I am at work. And then you get another plotting, which is synthesis, which is an average of all these three. And here you also get the E, which is how objective you are in decision-making. And I'm extremely objective, which is, a, which is a good thing, at least for the job, which I was applying for and not subjective. So I'm not, making decisions using gut feel, rather I'm making decisions using data and information and looking through sources and facts. Now you will see another score here, which is denoted by a letter M. Here it is 28 and then on self-concept it is 25 and the total shown in synthesis is 53, which is the total of 25 and 28. This is the number of questions that I answered or the number of adjectives that are selected for self and then the number of adjectives that are selected for self-concept. So for self, I selected 28 and for self-concept, I selected 25 and the total is 53. While the letter M is not a measure of any construct, it does play a role in scoring of the PI behavioral assessment, specifically factor scores for people who have very low or very high M scores may be unstable. Here, the predictive index does not recommend making decisions on self or self-concept patterns that are generated with M scores, which are below six, which means someone 
only picked six adjectives or above 80 which means they almost picked almost all the adjectives instead of the candidate is otherwise qualified you should ask them to retake the assessment so if they are selected only six or less adjectives or 80 or above adjectives then it's best to ask them to retake the assessment now this is this plotting here is a summary of my strongest behavior and again this goes back to the strengths that i shared with you in the pdf here they are expanded more and it lists all the strengths that I have. Then also the report will share a summary of who you are. Then it will share with you a summary of your management style, a manager of people or pro projects. How do I behave when with people and when managing projects? As an influencer, what is my style? And then what are the management strategies that my manager and team can use in order to get the best out of me? So you'll have these three elements management style influencing style and management strategies given to you along with a summary of uh, your profile and then your key strengths which are primarily coming from the pdf thank you for watching this video hopefully you found this video valuable on this channel i post content twice a week on how to achieve career success and financial success here is one video which you might be interested in how to go about appearing for a behavioral interview so check it out other than that, I have another video where I talk about how you can be best in whatever you do and how you can do skill stacking in order to turn out to be best in your peer group. So check out that video as well. Thank you.